Hi guys, today we have Nilparna Sen with us. Nilparna has been a fitness entrepreneur since the past 10 years and now she has also ventured into hospitality industry as a hospitality entrepreneur. Hi Nilparna, Hi. we are so glad to have you on our platform today Thank and you. we are really looking forward to know your journey as a women entrepreneur. So to start with Nilparna, uh, we would like to know how your story has been, what motivated you to become an entrepreneur or a fitness entrepreneur in the first place and how has been the journey up till now. Okay, so thank you so much for inviting me to this, it's an honour and uh, before I go on talking about myself, I really wanted to appreciate the both of you for thank doing you. a phenomenal job. Thank for you so bringing about a phenomenal product in f and um, I've used yours, I've used a, your product and I've used all the best international ones in the same category yeah. and it's unbelievable Thank that you. two young girls from Surat, from my hometown yeah. has come up with this. Thank you. That love it, you. love it, love it. Thank okay, you. so uh, coming back to my journey. So I did not start out as a fitness entrepreneur. I just start out as somebody who wanted to serve the fitness industry. Mm. So I'm originally an advertising professional. Mm. Um, I did my masters of advertising from Bombay oh, wow. and then I had the typical dreams, you know, typical yeah. corporate dreams. Yeah, I, yeah. I would probably end up being a client servicing um, agent right. in a corporate yeah. house, right? And then um, I was preparing for an exam and I had a year uh, off. Okay. okay. In that year off in Surat, I thought, hey, you know what, I have nothing else to do and yeah. the city has nothing else to do. Yeah. So why not get into fitness? Right. You know, why not get a little fitter, join right. a gym and see, see how it yeah. goes. And uh, Basically, I was always a, I, I was always an academic, but I was never a hardworking person. Mm. I was always very lazy. I was always looking forward to the weekends. Yeah. I, I, I had like zero to no work ethic, okay. you know. And fitness, that one year of fitness changed me entirely. Mm. Like whatever skills I thought that were important, mm. but I did not have, mm. those were just drilled into me. Wow. So I understood the concept, the correlation of discipline, of work ethic right. and change yeah. and results, yeah. right? Yeah. And that was a shocking news. Yeah. At the age of 19, it was it was shocking to of me. Of course, right? yeah. And then I thought, hey, you know, uh, fitness is giving me so much mm. right it's given me so much it's mm. changed my life 360 degree mm. i used to sleep at 4 a.m and then i started waking up at 4 a.m yeah. i think all teenagers have gone through that right? yes yeah. yes absolutely absolutely yeah. and so if something had a power this big mm. this influential why not give it back right right yeah studied the industry a little bit more, saw a lot of space. Mm. Uh, I saw that there are a million other advertising professionals like yeah. I would be, yeah. but not enough. Mm. You know, there's not enough talent, not enough uh, resources in the field of fitness. Right. So I thought, hey, why not get into it? Yeah. So I started out as a trainer. Mm. I started out as a junior trainer okay. in a gym in Surat, in mm. a very big gym in Surat. Mm. And very quickly, I rose, the ra I rose up the ranks. And uh, I was made the CEO within a year of joining that center. Wow. And that center was KG. And yeah. KG was one of the biggest, it's if not the biggest yeah, gym. Yeah, it, it was the biggest gym in Surat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not just in Surat, it was the biggest fitness center in, in probably the entire country. Right. And at the age of 22, to be given the responsibility of a 50 crore business. Right. Uh, and um, 50 employees, yeah. 50 to 70 employees yeah. at that time, yeah. who were at least 10 to 15 years elder to me, yeah. was a game changer. Huge. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like such a big achievement for anybody, right? At such a young age, it's commendable. So, see, that opportunity was not the achievement. Mm. What we we do with that opportunity yeah. was an achievement, yeah. right? So the CEO is like, hey, you know what? I'm giving you this exam. Let right. me see how you do it. Right. So I was just given the exam. Yeah. And uh, I think the first two years were extremely stressful. There was mm. so much overwhelm mm. and there were, I was struggling with, uh, you know, uh, steering the entire ship. Mm. So steering the ship as an entrepreneur is like, uh, 
you have to take care of everything you are you are not just the captain you're also the waiter you're also the yeah. the, the housekeeper yeah. you're also the the attendant you're yeah. also i don't know the chef in everything. the ship everything yes. yeah so if you did one five yeah. four others just were yeah. tumbling down yeah. and uh, that's how i felt that's how entrepreneurship mm. felt like that's how business leading yes. felt like yes. it still feels like that yeah it still feels like that still i get it like <laughs> yeah so i didn't know i had a very linear mind so i didn't know how to look at right. it holistically yeah learned got better at it um and throughout the entire process of uh, building a great fitness company i had one and only one thing in my uh, mind at mm. the core which was i wanted to change uh, the industry for good right right so i wanted to change the kind of coaching that was provided to mm. i wanted to improve everybody's health mm. in the truest sense mm. so the so 10 years back or 15 years back you go to a gym and you go to a fitness uh, you go to a fitness center hmm. and the trainer would tell you hey you know what ye supplement le lo wo yeah. supplement le lo yeah. right aapko aap aap khali khali chicken ya fir khali paneer aur khali ghas pus khao nahi to aapka result nahi aayega uh, so basically they used to harm you hmm. more than they did good right right and i wanted to change that mm. so i saw those i saw those loopholes yeah. so i started building trainers mm. i started building trainers mm. educating them mm. with uh, with the right tools and the resources mm. and the right knowledge mm. which got passed down very quickly yeah. and uh, yeah so the journey is is still continuing how about like in your entrepreneurial journey like you like rightly described it's like a ship and you're doing everything you're the captain yeah. you're the chef you're the housekeeper and um being a woman you know we go through a lot of stereotypes and especially in the fitness industry there must be some really hard stereotypes so what are some of the stereotypes that you have faced in your uh, journey as an entrepreneur and how have you overcome that so there's a very famous fable hmm. right so you go to uh, uh you uh, some uh, a man a man goes to africa like a trader goes to africa yeah, yeah. and nobody wears shoes and then right. he comes back and he's like dude nobody wears shoes in africa right. and another uh, another trader goes to africa and uh, he's like dude nobody wears shoes yeah. we can sell so much yeah. right so a situation is basically how you look at it right correct absolutely so as a woman i never looked at it as a as a disadvantage right. in fact it's always been an advantage right. and in fact i think this is this is the best time the the ripest time for a woman to grow hmm. why because a lot of the stereotypes that a woman is not capable has already been gone right okay so if a woman is even slightly smarter slightly mm. capable mm. she gets appreciated a lot more than a man with the same talent would right. be because hey she's a woman and she's doing it right yeah so a that is number 1 mm. second i'm in the service sector industry mm. right so how so being a woman uh, i have soft skills that probably most men like. you know it's not inherent to most men yeah right so dealing with people becomes easier Easy. dealing with people becomes softer right and leading the company also mm. becomes softer and yeah. more maternal yeah. and you know you see a lot more changes yeah. when you're maternal and care about your employees Absolutely. than being the male yeah. like dominating male yeah. bossy yeah. boss yeah. right yeah. so i always looked at it as an advantage mm. right and uh, otherwise other than other than uh, this i don't think that that it it is a disadvantage yeah. anymore so no in my personal journey never never that's, never that's that's amazing i mean uh, looking at the situation always in your advantage is yeah. also one perspective change that you know all of us need be like you know beat males or females yeah um so what are some lessons and tips you would like to give to fellow women entrepreneurs who are just starting out there are so many oh my god there are there are so many so the biggest reason why i see a lot of women um pull back from their career or their truest potential hmm. is um is not because they are suppressed yeah. okay they are not let to do that hmm. it's because they allow themselves to be suppressed hmm. right hmm. so most of the women they have 
एक्सक्यूजेस की फैमिली नहीं करने दे रही हस्बैंड नहीं करने दे रहा आई के नॉट वर्क दीज मेनी आवर्स आई आई एम अ वुमेन आई गेट टायर्ड आई हैव मैन सीज आई हैव सो ऑल दिस सप्रेशन दैट यू सी एंड दे कंप्लेन अबाउट के यार नहीं हुआ अलाउ नहीं किया सो आई वॉन्ट टू टेल ऑल ऑफ दैम दैट गो थ्रू द स्ट्रगल गो थ्रू द रियली अनकम्फर्टेबल पीरियड ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद your loved ones mm. to let you do what you really want to do mm. to let you let yourself go at full speed full mm. throttle to mm. something that you love that mm. you would love or towards success mm. and that period of conflict resolves itself yeah in the most beautiful way right so when your parents or your husband or your loved one sees you succeeding mm. after all those fights mm. guess what they become happier right then even you are about your own Absolutely. success yeah so my suggestion to all women is that do know do what is right for you yeah. right yeah. and if there is conflict in your family face that mm. conflict mm. face that conflict let it pass mm. so a lot of women lack the strength and the courage to do that right. to go through that i think yeah i think since childhood we are ingrained in such a way that you have to be the good girl you don't yeah. have to you know you can't argue with your parents yeah. you shouldn't yeah. argue with your partner and we are born and brought up in such a way that uh, avoiding conflict becomes our natural instinct yes uh, yes and yeah i think it's really important for women to realize that and you know face that conflict head on yes so in your journey alpana have you had such conflicts with you know your loved ones or have you had to go through such a phase in your life hmm. before becoming the person you are today uh honestly uh, i i i do come from a family of great women entrepreneurs so what was drilled what was conditioned to me was that you have to be successful oh. no matter what you cannot live off your husband's right. money you cannot uh, be earning any less than your husband yeah. you cannot get married until you're standing up on yeah. your own feet all of that okay yeah. which i feel really lucky for but then but then after all not as a woman but as a daughter hmm. okay as a daughter i faced a lot of hey you know what don't stress yourself yeah. out too much yeah. right so currently okay speaking of the last two weeks yeah. i've had i've been having um, 18 hour work days mm. 18 hour like i sleep at 4 i wake up at 6 right. it's just like 2 hours every day yeah. and as a parent they are really 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 concerned, concerned. right yeah. and they would want to pull you back and right. take care of you and yeah. give you a hot bowl of soup and yeah. put blankets on yeah. and you need to realize that uh, you know i needed to realize, uh, realize that this is what they think is the best for me right uh, but i know what is the best for me i need all that suffering i need all the yeah all the late nights right yeah. and uh, yeah so not really major ones mm. but uh, uh, but yeah minor ones that got Such. sorted along the way of course yeah i mean uh, the parents always want to protect us right yes. be it in their authoritative way that no you can't go here you can't do that or be it in that pampering and Haan. no don't stress sleep take yeah. medicine yeah. but i think yeah we need to power through that oh and, yes uh, oh yes and you know what you know what it's very easy to listen to them to give in to yeah, that yeah but um it's all it's very tempting you, yeah it's so tempting because yeah. because it, dude it's it's what it's like your it's like your third year of 16 hour work days right. no breaks no vacations right. and you're tired you're yeah. you're on the edge of burning out and then yeah. somebody gives you hey uh, it's okay it's to okay. rest yeah. it's very yeah. difficult to um say to yourself that no do yeah, no, 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 no no we are not yeah. we are not doing that not we are not doing that. that that's true yeah. so that's the only minor conflict but again even fighting that fighting these minor conflicts also matter a lot when yeah, it comes to long term successes of course i mean they also need to see that okay no my daughter can do it you know she yeah, is capable yeah, yeah, exactly. i don't need to worry about it yeah, exactly. she take care of herself Yeah. So I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. And uh since we are talking on Women's Day and about menstrual hygiene, so what do you think are the menstrual taboos still existing in India or the stereotypes and how do we drive that conversations? Any incidents that uh, come to your mind when you talk about menstrual taboos and stereotypes, you know, in your industry? Yeah. And how did you overcome them? Yeah. Okay. So, um in 2015 you know uh, 2014 15 when when i just joined the fitness industry uh so 9 10 years back 
it was still pretty much a taboo right you could not say to your trainer who was usually a male mm. that sir mai aaj nahi kar sakti right. because mai periods mein hu ha that unheard of yeah. what right and i faced that mm. uh, i faced that in the fitness center that i was currently heading mm. so what used to happen was women were suffering through their periods they would not talk to they could not talk to the trainers about right. it they would come to me and then i had to lead the trainer in to to train her a certain way and and the entire process was just getting longer yeah. and longer and longer and longer yeah. what i really needed and i could i could take care of what 100 women at a time yeah. and this you know fitness in your periods is a very vast topic right it's a very vast topic mm. there are so many ways to combat it mm. there are so many ways to not feel as bad as you do during your periods mm. uh, which can be solved with fitness right right and that message needed to go out mm. to not 100 but thousands More of women yeah. and for that i needed women to feel safe right. around their trainers right so what i started doing was i started making the educating the trainers number mm. one who are usually males mm. second teaching them how to make women clients mm. feel safe mm. around that topic mm. right uh, so the trainers started talking about how yeah. how much comfort they give to their family right. to their sisters to their mothers right. when they are going through it yeah. and it started penetrating yeah. then the trainers started problems uh, solving it for them mm. so women who had extreme unbearable paralyzing period pain their problems were sorted through like a certain training method or wow. a certain or, or a certain diet or mm. certain dietary mm. uh, interventions right so when that started happening the whole system sort of shook and right. this new change started penetrating yeah. down right yeah. and i think now it's now what happened to that one fitness center or or the three that i've led yeah. it needs to uh be spread to the, the 3000 in india yeah. right yeah i think we are still a long way from that but we are definitely improving on the right path absolutely so just starting a conversation around it helps a lot right educating yeah. not just females but males as in how can they lead the conversation around yes. it maybe so that the counterpart feels more comfortable absolutely does make a lot of difference and it improves our quality of life significantly correct but correct just because we have been conditioned to not talk about it uh, people hesitate from that but yes. i i also do think that we are on the right path of breaking those taboos and you know really uh, powering through that thank you so much nilparna it was such an enlightening discussion and i'm sure pleasure. the viewers watching this the women entrepreneurs the fitness enthusiasts would take away so much from this conversation and your journey has been truly inspiring thank, thank you so you. much for joining us today thank you so much it's been a pleasure yeah.